Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Standard channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a replay and analyze the gameplay in Battle for Middle Earth 1, this time in a 2v2 match between Good and Evil, Mordo Isengard, Jens Gondor Rohan, on the map Anori and the patches 1.06. Before further ado, let's get it started. At the bottom right side of the map we have the red Gondor player Egon. His ally at the top right side is the green Rohan player Tryon. They are against the grey Isengard player Oswald and his ally at the bottom left side is the yellow Mordor player Bambi. It's a nice matchup, good against evil Mordor Isengard against Gondor Rohan, I like this. Early on for the good sides, I mean in this case Gondor and Rohan, they will have to try to deal as much damage to the economy from the evil players as possible. Because evil factions in BFME 1 are scaling quite hard into the mid game and if you don't kill the Lumber Mills early on against Moro or Isengard, you will be in trouble later on, trust me on that one. One player starting with two farms inside the base, as Gondor player was starting with a blacksmith and a farm instead. On the other side, Isengard's player was building two furnaces first, for economy, while the Moro player was getting the Hobbit recruited, I mean the Golem recruited, sorry, and also getting a Orc pet. Oh oh, oh oh, <laughs> that's unlucky, <laughs> look at this. Look at this, guys. Oh, that's so unlucky. The troll is gonna fight for the evil part. I mean, obviously, because troll is evil as well, as you guys know. He's, he doesn't care about friends and photo. He's just gonna slap the orcs as well, just like that. <laughs> but nice defense from the troll. It was kinda lucky for the evil side. Because in a one-on-one -on -one situation, the peasants, they would be able to deal with the orcs. No big deal. During all this time, the Gondor player was able to reach the slumber mill at the bottom right side. He will try his best to take it down. Eye of Sauron is gonna be used for... And look at this, guys. The Gondor player is getting three farms under his control. Rohan has only one farm outside. That's gonna make those Gondor Knights quite cheap later on from the stable. Heal is being used, by the way, from the Gondor player. But I'm assuming he won't be able to take down this mill. Great job here from the Mordor player, definitely. He will be able to keep this one alive, which is, by the way, quite important. And he has nothing inside his base just yet, but that's gonna change very, very soon, guys. Because if you don't lose your Lumber Mills, you are in a great spot. The Lumber Mills are gonna give you a lot of money, but also the, um, the Woods Bonus, which is gonna make your buildings inside your base also cheaper. Which again means that, um, you know, building your base is gonna be overall much more cost efficient. It looks like the model player is gonna lead to the work layer right after with his Oryx, and during all this time, Rohan player is just trying to pressure him as much as he can. Isengard's player now has a Uruk pit under his control and he will get a lot of Urukai on the field and try his best to keep those Lumber Mills protected. The farm number 4 is coming up for the Rohan player, <clears throat> but he has not that much money because he has only one farm outside of his base, while the Gondor player has 3 farms. He just needs to go now for the stable as soon as possible. I'm actually curious why he doesn't have the money. He's cash floating as you can see yourself. And cash floating is a bad sign. You don't want to cash float in this matchup, you need it to be fast, you know? You need to be extremely fast. Alright, the Moro player is gonna commit now against the work layer, and he will try his best to get the last hit, which is gonna help him to get the Tainted Land unlocked from the Spellbook. Let's see who's gonna get the creep, and let's see who's gonna get the money, very important that Moro gets it. The money is gonna be super helpful to fill up the base as soon as possible. And the Moro player was also able to get the money, which is quite nice. This money now, he has, can be invested into making some more slaughterhouses, like in this case, for example. Smart move here from the Rohan player, killing these workers from the mill, which is very important. If you realize that you can't take down the mill, all you have to do is kill the workers instead with the Hobbit, which is quite important in this matchup. And once again, hurting the economy from the Moro or Isengard faction is game winning. If you can't do that, they will have a lot of money. And by the time you get your upgrades on your Gondor Knights, they will have pikemen, they will have trolls, everything on the field to defend themselves quite easily. The stable is coming up now for the Rohan player. He was not going for any heroes, by the way, guys. I mean, the Hobbits are doing a nice job, I need to say. But so far, not a single mill has been taken down. Alright, but Moro player was getting the money from the creep, which is nice. He has now, in total, three slaughterhouses inside the space. That's gonna help him to actually get more and more money over time. During all this time, the Gondor player is building his base. Remember, he has three farms under his control and two farms inside the base. That means the Gondor Knights now are gonna be um, very, very cheap. They're gonna cost much less now with the food bonus. As you can see, they cost 600. They would normally cost 800 instead. 
So 200, per, uh, 200 resources cheap on, which is very, very efficient, trust me. On the other side, we're gonna have also some Rohirrim coming up for the Rohan player. This is something I don't like to see that much. I feel like the Rohan player should be getting his Eomir on the field instead. Try to get this creep with Eomir. Get him level 4 as soon as possible. Eomir horse slot leadership can, can actually stack with the Theodin and his glorious charge slash leadership. So you can make your Rohirrim. Rohirrim arches later on. But also, the Gondor Knights from your ally quite strong. Um, smart move here by combining this Orc Archer Battalion, which is level 3. And remember, in the worst case, he can have the Eye of Sauron plus the Tainted Lands and even the War Chant from his ally. That means this Oryx, they can be very strong. So committing against them should be kinda avoided. At least right now. We have some pikemen on the fields now to deal with the Gondonites, very important. The game is being on host from the Moro player, Bambi. So he has, um, you know, advantage, slight advantage in this matchup. Doesn't matter that much for Mordor, though. And it was, you know, kind of challenging for the for the uh, good players, Gondor and Rohan, because playing off offos with good factions in BFM1, it can be actually quite, quite difficult. Alright, we have also combos around this side. The Rohirrim, they need to be careful, because they are not as tanky as Gondor Knights, by the way, in those kind of situations. They might be in trouble. One power point collected for Isengard's player, he's gonna try to collect for two. He's microing around, he will be forced to disengage now. He's lucky that Isengard has no towers around this area. Otherwise, he would be in a really, really bad situation. I mean, he's gonna be in a bad situation regardless, because there is a tower now, all he has to do, all he can do now is go all the way around, pack this wall in order to be able to survive if throw hit him. Otherwise, he's gonna lose them. Oh, he's actually going from the top right side, and I take it back, he will be able to get away, which is quite nice. On the other side, the motor player was, I'm assuming, able to get this creep at the bottom right side. And Gondor player is also gonna be able to creep this work layer now. He's luring the works from this creep also to his own uh, base, which is gonna help him to get the power points he's looking for. I'm assuming Aegon, the Gondor player, is gonna try to get Gandalf on the field. And that's why he needs the power points for Gandalf, which requires you to get two power points from the spellbook after the heal. On the other side, Isengard is pretty much untouched, as well as Moro, so they have a lot of money right now. And Moro player is actually building up now a troll cage in his base. So they're gonna be in a really, really safe spot very soon. Because trolls and pikemen from the Isengard faction are gonna be a nice counter to everything what the Gondor Rohan team has on the field right now. And also smart move, by the way, it's very important to actually go for a teamwork like this. If you are playing good factions, two of them in this map, you don't have to build a well inside your base if your ally has one. You can always use the well from your ally instead, you know? And that makes kind of sense because Gondor player has three farms under his control now since the beginning of the game. And if Rohan would even now go for a well, he would be quite behind in terms of resources. Alright, uh, Rohir marches are not gonna be quite weak, but I think the best counter in those kind of situations are definitely peasants because they can kill those pikemen way, way faster. Rohirrim marches without leadership and without fire. He will need a lot of time to take down the spikemen from a safe distance. The farm has been taken down. During all this time, Gondor is committing now against this um, units. He can go for the for the land, by the way. And he's gonna go for it. That's a smart move. I like that. Elven Mood will be used to cover the tainted land. And also kind of risky move from the Moro player to actually use the tainted land first against Gondor. Who can cover that by only investing one power point from the spellbook. And he got the entire power points he was investing by killing all these units around this side. But now he was forced to retreat. He has also the Nigel upgrade purchase, by the way. I mean, he has a lot of money right now. Because, again, three farms outside, they are all about to hit level 3, so his money is gonna look quite nice very soon. During all this time, Rohan is struggling to deal with this Spearman from Isengard. He has finally tailed in on the field, which is needed, because you will need some damage leadership, as mentioned before, if you want to be able to kill those pikemen fast enough. And also the same situation against the trolls. You want to be able to burst them down, otherwise the troll can always peel back and eat an orc and heal up to full HP, just like that. That's why it's important to burst down these units in a couple of seconds. That's why Eomir can be also nice, because Eomir can, you know, has the potential to finish them off with a, with a spear troll. Oh, be careful here. I mean, the thing is that pikemen are gonna be very, very hard to deal with for the Gonzo, so he will definitely need the assistance from his ally as soon as possible. 
And once again, Rohir marches. Look how much time they need without leadership and fire to take down this pikeman. They're gonna need ages. Theoden has to stay nearby to this units to make them stronger. Isengard is going for armory next, and he is getting all the upgrades purchased. He was also using industry, which is you know making his money even greater. Moto play on the other side is building up a army warfare of Moto pretty much. And yeah, hit and run. I think that's the way to go. And Moto has to just survive until the troll cage hits level two, which is gonna happen after this mountain troll joins the fight. And that's gonna give the Moto player. Bambi, the chance to recruit the best sportive units in the game, aka the Drama Trolls from the Moto faction. They are giving you 50% damage, 50% armor and 200% combat experience. And this is only one way of getting leadership. Moto can still go for the Witch King later on, which, more, which again means 50% more damage, 50% more damage and 50% more armor. And same also with the Eye of Sauron, which also gives you 50% damage boost as well as 100% combat experience. That means your units are not gonna hit like a truck, but they're gonna also level up like crazy, <laughs> trust me. Like after killing one unit, they're gonna hit potentially level 10 instantly with this much combat experience. Rohir matches without upgrades, you need to be careful. Trample is incoming, Warchan is gonna be used from the Isengas player, the Gondor Rohan team, they need to be extremely careful now. And peel back as fast as possible. Um, the thing is, this is not going to become any easier for the for the Gondor Rohan team right now. Because they are missing Aomi leadership, they are missing um, GC, which is called Glorious Charge from Theoden level 4. They will definitely need some trebuchets later on from the Gondor player. Because that's the only way, to be honest with you guys, to deal with this massive Isengard army, with this massive leadership. Which is almost making them invincible to any other damage but from trebuchets. I mean, the thing, what I like about this situation for the Gondor Rohan team the most is definitely their mobility. So they have a lot of tools to hit and run, deal damage and peel back whenever you have to. In the slow units from Isengard, they won't be able to catch you as long as you keep running away. So ideally, you want to get as many power points as possible. That Rohan also has the Elven Wood unlocked. With double Elven Wood, you might be able to do something because Elven Wood in BFME 1 works like a, like a freezing rain. So it will nullify the entire enemy leadership on this spot, which can give you the time you need to burst down some important units slash heroes later on from the Isengard player, for example. I'm assuming he's gonna go for Lourdes later on to be able to get, you know, a hero on the field that can counter all the other heroes in the game with his cripple ability. And for that reason, all they have to do is just buy time. Try to keep the Moro Isengard team busy and let Gondor player get his Gandalf on the field, let him get some trebuchets on the field later on. Very important. I'm assuming the Moro player is gonna try to save now for the Witch King. He was also using industry on his allies base by the way guys. Which is smart because Isengard in those kind of situations needs definitely more money than Moro. Because Isengard has expensive units, he has to upgrade every single one of them. Moro doesn't need that much money right now because he can just sit in his base with the Trauma Trolls and you know Trolls. And he will be good to go. I mean, ideally in this matchup, what Isengard's player has to do is he has to send at least one combo battalion in each base to have some protection against the Rohirrim marches. Because once a Rohan player has fire upgrade purchase on his Rohirrim marches, they can actually burst down the trolls in seconds. Even now, look how much damage he's able to deal. And he has the potential of kiting, you know, he can hit and run all the time. And he will be able to save the Rohirrim, which is quite nice. But now they have, they have the Drama Troll leadership, which by the way, once again, is the best leadership in the game for the combos, for the infantry units. On the other side, the Gondor player is definitely getting his Gandalf to bite on the field. He has already the power points he needed from the spellbook. And he's already making a spot in the space, ready to build up the workshop. Which is gonna allow him to get the trebuchets on the field. Which, by the way, is also necessary in this matchup. Because the weakness right now from the Isengard's Moto team is definitely the lack of mobility. They have really slow units because he's combining the Urukai with the Crossbowman and with the uh, Crossbowman with the Pikeman. This way they cannot dodge the incoming damage fast enough against the Trebuchets. And all the Rohan player has to do is keep these Trebuchets protected. Theodin is gonna get closer and closer to level 4. Level 4 is a huge power spike against the Glorious Charge is, you know, the best spot for the horses in the game.
And yeah, I mean, looks pretty nice to me right now. Here's Gandalf on the field. Now they can pressure from both the sides and keep the Mora Isengard team kind of in jail. I mean, they are kind of in a bad spot right now. Definitely, uh, Lourdes is going to be needed. Warchan is going to be used on this unit. And that's going to be enough to force the Rohan player to retreat. And also, Armory is coming up now. He was already able to, you know, purchase the heavy armor into Benekeri upgrades. He can also skip the blades in this matchup because he has, ally, he has his ally with the Gondonites and Forge Blades. He was using Bizarre Plus, but I'm assuming Isengard's player was able to dodge. But uh, Gandalf got still level 6. He will be able to catch this Drama Troll as well, which is a nice catch. Look at this damage with this Gondonites. And they have also now 200% combat experience because Gandalf is nearby. And with that being said, Rohir marches, Gondonites, but everything around them as well, including the heroes, are gonna level up like crazy when Gandalf is close by. No lords on the field. Uh, there is no. Oh, I didn't even see him, my bad. <laughs> Lord was able to cripple down Gandalf. Rest in peace, white guy. <laughs> there is no way you can make it out alive. I mean, they have heal, they have double heal, but it is not gonna change anything. Look at this level, guys, from this troll. The Gandalf Slayer. Level 7, just like that. <laughs> I mean, what I, what I was saying before, remember, like, Drama Troll gives you 200% combat experience, and Eye of Sauron gives you additionally 100% combat experience as well. So all that combined, quick math, that is 300% combat experience. And you kill the most expensive hero, you know, the most broken hero in the game, Guns After Why, just like that, with a troll. And he gets from level 1 to almost level 8 instantly, which is... Quite impressive. And yeah, once again, you know, Lords is the best hero to deal with strong heroes like Aragorn, Gandalf, Theodin. Because he can pin them down for multiple seconds. And in those kind of situations, we have more than enough time to burst down Gandalf, even with two, three, four heals. It does not matter. And because of the combat experience, Lords is also gonna be able to level up quite fast. You will see what I mean once he's able to share some experience with this allied units around him. And now the commitment against this um, against this base because, I mean, I think they should be trying to take down this Rohan base instead, in my opinion. Because this base is going to be in a safe spot now with this trebuchets being inside. So the trolls are going to get knocked back or knocked down when, they, when they're going to try to commit against this wall because of the trebuchets. And Motoplam has no Witch King on the field or not an Asgul on the field just yet to take down those trebuchets before they have to engage. I mean, I can understand they are trying to actually engage because they have to uh, win this game kind of fast. Otherwise, the Rohan Gondor team, they can always sit and run like they are doing. And you will be forced to defend yourself almost exclusively. And that's what I mean, look how much work these trebuchets are doing. The drama troll has to get closer to the trolls to give them some resistance and armor. But it's not about the damage from this trebuchet, it's about the way they are getting knocked down on the ground. And getting disabled yeah, like yeah, this. The drama troll is giving leadership, but look at the shots, ladies and gentlemen. And I feel like Isengard's player changed his mind, I will be now used, and one, pa one part of the wall has been broken. Uh, the problem is, this battalion here has almost no archers included, because he lost almost every single one of them, you know, to this one trebuchet shot. One trebuchet down. Uh, can he take him down when he's dead? Oh no, but he's gonna be able to finish him off now. The trolls are not- oh, not even close. The trolls are not dealing that much damage to trebuchets, if they, especially not if they have no leadership. Like, I was not used on them. The drama troll was really far away. And that might be a really bad commitment. I asked on upgrade purchase now, booyah! And that's what I mean, that's what I mean. Trebuchets are the best counter to combos. Um, Elvin allies will be used. I mean, that's kind of interesting because Elvin allies, let's be honest, that's not going to do much for you. Uh, these combos, they are kind of doomed though because they are in a, in a really, you know, tiny spot in which trebuchets are going to deal massive damage. And now the commitment with the Gundam Knights after all the pikemen are dead. He's still losing a lot of the Skondonites to the Spikemen from the units. And Lourdes might die right after. What a great defense. And I think it's a wrong commitment definitely from... Oh, he's gonna use Carnage with the Lourdes before he goes down. Can he take down Theodin? The answer is no. Theodin might share experience and he will share experience. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Theodin's level 4. A.K.A. Glorious Charge is unlocked. Which is a huge spot. For the Gondonites and for the Rohirrim Arches. 
And that can change everything, literally. I mean, they are in a great spot right now. They have, you know, really highly leveled Condonites. Look at this, level 9, level 6. Here then is level 4. You know, Lord, I mean, not Lord, sorry. Lord, I mean, Lord also has been taken down. Faramir is on the field, almost level 4. Gandalf, he was not able to get Gandalf back on the field because he has not money right now. He was forced to get multiple trebuchets, of course, for defense. So Gandalf is not going to join the battlefield any soon. We will have Freezing Rain ability available for Isengard now for the next fight. It's a bad commitment. You don't want to trample into this bikeman. They have still a lot of leadership. Don't underestimate that. Uh, Lourdes is getting revived. And that's for death and glory, ladies and gentlemen. Freezing Rain is going to be used. But I think Elvin Wood is going to be used now for the trample. They are going ham. They are going inside the jeans. Elvin Wood to deny all the existing leadership. Tainted Land, which is a bad move in my opinion, because that's gonna give now them the leadership back they needed. But look at this, look at this. How many Rohirrim and Rohirrim matches were actually taken down in a second. Eagle Allies is summon, uh, Eagle Allies summon is ready. That Rohan player is gonna use his own Elvin Wood. And now they have also leadership back in the business. Theodem was able to survive, which is the most important hero in those kind of situations. You need to keep him alive. You need to keep him in a, in a safe spot. Ideally behind your units, this way he doesn't get one-shotted. I mean, it's not about Theoden, even though Theoden is one of the squishiest heroes in the game, but it's about the leadership the Rohan, uh, I mean, the Isengard motor team has right now. That is, uh, Witch King is on the field now, that means even more power, more leadership, more mobility now as well. The thing is, Witch King cannot commit against his army. Like, the second he tries to commit against his Rohirrim marches, he can get, get, he can get literally one-shotted. That's a mistake if he tries to go for that, for that, in my opinion at least. That's why he has to be kind of acting like a, like a stage away, pretty much. You know, like a mobile, uh, you know, mobile stage away because all he has to do is literally sit behind, any, uh, behind your units or behind the units from your ally and spot them with leadership. The thing is, Witch King's leadership is, you know, kind of... In a, in a large area, pretty much, you know? That means, even when you are around this side, you can still give leadership to this allied combos. So you can really sit far behind, or, you know, fly far behind in this case, in Witch King's case, and you will still be able to support your allied units with leadership, and that's a nice leadership as well. 50% more damage, 50% more armor. Eowyn is one of the cheapest and one of the best counters to the Witch King. She is able to burst down the Witch King from 100 to 50% HP with only her smite ability. Alright, uh, Theodian Glorious Charge is available. That's a scary army from the Gondor Rohan team, definitely. Gandalf might be back on the field very, very soon. By the way, that's Faramir getting back to his base for some reason. Um, should be trying to get leadership unlocked as well from the level 5. All he has to do is stay close to the allied units because they have so much combat experience in those kind of situations, you know. And they can always share experience with the Rohirrim matches and level up like this quite fast. And the thing is, I feel like the Gondor Rohan team, if they play it smart, they can still dominate this fight, even though the, Ro I, you know, more the Isengard team, they have now a lot of leadership, as you can see. Because Trebuchets, they're gonna still one shot pretty much everything, you know. All Rohan has to do, and that's his whole <laughs> mission in this matchup. Keep those trebuchets protected against the Witch King, because the Witch King is going to definitely try to commit against his trebuchets. He's going to try his best to take them down. And when the Rohirrim marches are nearby, he's going to be able... He's not going to be able to do that, because he's going to get one-shotted if he tries to do it. Right now, the trebuchets are not protected. And... Every single one of them costs you almost around a thousand. They cost you a thousand. Seven hundred for the for the trebuchet and three hundred, even three fifty for uh, for the upgrade. So they're gonna cost you more than one thousand resources, and you're gonna get one shot at from the witch king, just like that. Eagle summon. I don't know about that. I mean, eagles. They're gonna also get one shot in those kind of situations. Bambi, the model player, is asking his ally for help. Look at this, guys. Now you see them. Now you don't. Just like that, level 6 already by killing a couple of units. And they are leveling up like crazy generally. Level from level 2 to level 4 after killing two Rohirrim matches, just like that. A lot of leadership. Alvin Wood is still on cooldown. Committing against this army is not a option. They are just too strong. One of the Eagles was able to survive. Uh, Gandalf is almost back in the business. And Glorious Charge for Death and Glory. Does he have rain? Uh, does he have land? Yes, he has land. He's going for a trample. Beautiful trample is incoming. 
in the land to cover. Eowyn got one shot. by the way, I heard her screaming. Aragorn is on the field, they have lots of leadership. Uh, Rain is still on cooldown. But this is currently the land from the Mora Isengard team. Going for a trample in those kind of situations is definitely a mistake, because Glorious Charge is off, and everything is getting one-shotted. Aragorn got crippled down. Yes, Aragorn is the tankiest hero in the game with the Anduri Sword plus the Blade Master. But is he tanky enough in those kind of situations? The good thing is, for the good part here for Gondor and Rohan, there are barely any archers remaining on the field. But the couple of archers left are still able to almost one-shot this Aragorn, who is once again the tankiest hero in the game. The only hero in Battle for Middle Earth 1 who can withstand the breath fire from Balrog with Ignite. No other unit and no other hero can do that. Um, by the way, Lord has crippled ability available, so this Gandalf has to be extremely careful. Lightning Sword is going to be missed on the Switch King. Since Mortal players paying attention. Alright, so we're gonna get some more drama trolls on the field, we're gonna get some more trolls on the field, more Isengard team, they are in a great spot right now. And maybe taking a fight in those kind of situations without the help of the trebuchets was a mistake. The re-engagement on the Tainted Land was a horrible mistake, which made them lose multiple units. And once again, Rohan and Gondo also, they have to be extremely careful with the heroes. Because there is an anti-hero on the field, Lords is always gonna cripple you down the, the second day he gets the chance. And now he's also level 5. Let's count that for a second, guys. We have Lord's leadership 60% more damage. Drama Troll 50% more damage. Witch King 50% more damage. I 50% more damage. Warchan 50% more damage. And potentially later on, even Darkness. I mean, you can get your units really, really strong. Very important and smart move here from the Mora Isengard team. I like that. They are committing against Rohan, which is very smart. They know the base from, you know, Gondor is kind of hard to commit against because of the trebuchets. That's why now Gondor player is forced to move out. But trust me when I say that, if Isengard's play ignores everything and just focuses down the buildings, he can finish off this base in a couple of seconds. These towers, they are not going to be able to hurt this Isengard army. Trust me on that one. Yes, Archers on, you know, but there is just too much leadership. Look, guys, they are dealing almost no damage to these units. And when I say almost no damage, I mean literally no damage. Look at this. They are shooting them down for a, multiple seconds now. And they are just sitting there and smiling. One player was forced to buy the base in the middle, the camp, and yeah, he needs that. Because this base is not, you know, gonna be saved any soon. Um, the thing is, I think he was trying to get, you know, get his Aragorn back on the field, but that's not going to be possible. The entire castle has been taken down in multiple seconds all alone. And the only thing that keeps Rohan in this game right now is the fact that he has the middle camp under his control. But that's it. The Glorious Judge is going to be used now. We have some trebuchets on the field. That's the darkness from the model player this time, which means even more damage and more sport. The Witch King is competing against the trebuchets, and uh, they are using now the Tainted Land to cover the Elven Wood. Trample is bad one, look how fast these units are dying, even with the Glorious Charge. They are getting one-shotted, guys. And some of you guys were saying in the in the comment section, in our videos, oh my god, Glorious Charge is OP. This is OP. This is OP that your units are literally getting one-shotted while they are being buffed from the Glorious Charge. While the enemy units are not taking any kind of damage. Against Glorious Charge, charging Gondor Knights with full upgrades. This is Sparta. No, no, this is not Sparta. This is OP. That's what I'm trying to say. Why am I saying Sparta? Gandalf, look at this damage. Holy guacamole. This is a raid boss right there, guys. He was almost one-shotting Gandalf, dude. And the Drama Troll. And that's the funny part about that. Was not even close. Imagine Drama Troll being nearby. I was not even active on this unit. He would be one-shotting. Uh, Gandalf from 100 to 0 with one strike of his tree, the mighty troll from the Mordor faction, level 7, the king of the trolls. Warchan is gonna be used, this Arzingar army is looking scary, level 10 all around the place, I see only stars, stars, stars everywhere, even the trolls are shining bright like a diamond. And now is the time when Gothmog was screaming in the movies and he was saying, guys, guys, listen to me, the age of man is over. The age of the orcs has come. The only reason why Mordor was not able to accomplish this was because Isengard was defeated very fast. 
if they would be able to attack Minas City together, Saruman and Sauron side by side, this would be easy game for the evil part. A lot of circumstances were happening in which ants were also going to the war against Isengard. Gandalf saving the day multiple times, otherwise it would be GG for the good faction, trust me on that one. And indeed Tyrion, the Rohan player, has been defeated against the mighty Saruman and Sauron. There cannot be a victory guys, there cannot be a victory. This unit, they are having a destruction power equal to the Balrog himself. That's how strong they are. Gondor is trying to fight for, uh, for Army of the Dead. By the way, he's only 3 power points away. And Army of the Dead is one of the summons in the game that does not care about your leadership. You're gonna still one-shot everything, including Lourdes and Saruman in multiple seconds only. And there is nothing Isengard player can do about. The thing is, Isengard still needs 10 power points for his own Balrog. That means definitely... Uh-oh, <laughs> Gandalf. You are not going anywhere and look at this guys, this is looking scary dude. Look at this Gandalf, the shield bubble to save him for a couple of seconds, boom. <laughs> Level 10, the raid boss himself, he's getting kinda, you know, kinda baited from his own ally. The troll is knocking him down while he's dying. But still, look at this troll, how many times do you see a troll underneath the great eye of Sauron being level 10? Look at this tree, look at this design, look how mad he is looking like. That's the power of the mighty, mighty mountain trolls from the model player. Isengard player, I'm assuming, is gonna even buy the space now at the top right side. I mean, he can afford it, look his money, he has so much money right now. Model player was buying in the middle, at the camp in the middle, he's using industry and that's one of the perfect situations. Because in a middle camp from evil faction, you are able to use industry on every single building. Base is gonna be secured by the Isengard player. Two bases for both the players. Two bases for Isengard. One base in one, ca uh, one camp for the Mordor player. And Gondor player is left alone with a broken wall and Gandalf being in the graveyard. What can men do against such a reckless hit? The thing is that the Rohan player didn't even leave the game. That's the reason why Gondor player has only 150 command points. The thing is if you know Rohan player would leave the game before he gets defeated, his ally would get his command points, his money, and his units, but he still didn't leave the game, otherwise he would be extending his command points to 300 by the way. Eagle summon is ready, but there is no point of using it, because let's be honest guys, I'm giving the eagles 5 seconds, max. They're gonna not make it alive after 5 seconds, trust me. The power is just too great. You know, it's like you know, when Vegeta was saying, what's the power level? It's over 9000 and he was talking about this army, my man. Just talking about this army and look at these eagles the second they get the chance and uh, the enemy com combos i mean look what's gonna happen now to this combo uh, to this eagle without leadership by the way this has no leadership it's only level four if this level 10 unit or uh, level uh, five units here is gonna get the chance to attack them one second and look at this level this was level three now it's level six <laughs> from killing one eagle the combat experience is also crazy and eye of sauron was not even used stable level three he has a couple of trebuchets, he's trying to, he's trying the best to get the army of the dead unlocked, but again, that's not gonna change too much. Because army of the dead won't be enough to win you the game. It's gonna be still satisfying, because you will get the chance to kill the entire Isengard army. And I think that's the only reason why he's trying to do it. And he needs to know that this is not gonna make him win this game. And today, the evil is gonna be victorious, guys. One and a half power points still away from getting the army of the dead unlocked the offbreakers. He's trying to get his Gandalf back on the business. The thing is, Gandalf can't really do much. Now, this is the march of the mountain trolls, not of this of the ants this game. If Gandalf comes out now, he could be easily lighting this Witch King and Witch King would be dead. But it's Faramir joining the fight for now. Warning Arrow is dealing a lot of damage to trolls. Normally, it deals like zero damage almost to the Witch King. It's, however, very effective. Oh, oh Gandalf in the last... Oh, oh. <laughs> Gandalf, he is coming in into the fiesta. <laughs> he came on the field and died the second he joined. I have never seen that, dude. Did you guys see that? I mean, Gandalf was literally on the field for like 5 seconds. He, not even 5, you know, 0 0.5 seconds, I mean. <laughs> he died the second he came out. I mean, he was like, I've been sent back until my task is done. And then the troll's like, shut up. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> this is so fiesta. I like to see that. 
But I'm just getting bullied by Lourdes Cripple, by Fireball from Saruman. And that is GG in my book, in which the Mordor and Isengard are gonna be able to rule the Middle Earth. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. What's kind of fiesta to me? I mean, that's kind of the power from the evil faction, right? Mordor Isengard combination is just very powerful in terms of the stacking leadership system in Battle for Middle Earth 1. So you can pretty much make your units infinitely strong. There is no cap in BFME 1, unlike in all the other BFME games in which you can only have one leadership and one buff active at the same time. In BFME 1, everything is able to stack with each other. So this was 2v2. Imagine a 4v4, which includes every single one unique faction, and you get your units buff from every single hero slash building. Imagine how strong they would become. Anyways guys, GG well played, I hope you enjoyed this one, if you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video, and check me out on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards, the link in the description down below, they are streaming every um, Tuesday, Friday and Sunday, starting at 7pm GMT plus 1, I would love to meet you guys in the next live stream. until then, take care of yourselves, have a fantastic start into your weekend, and as always, stay beyond standards, peace guys.